Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today I'm going to be flapping my gums all about one of the most celebrated titles in gaming history, Grand Theft Auto 4. It's nitty, it's gritty, it's got big, American, improved graphics. What more could you want? As one of the main entries in the consistently well above average Grand Theft Auto series, we were bound to be giving it a visit at some point, and that point is right motherfucking now, okay? But which famed fashionista appears as a DJ in the game? How did the game indirectly slander a particular portion of New York City? And why does Roman like bowling so much? Is it because the balls remind him of big American improved graphics? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so ragdoll fall into a comfy chair, spawn yourself some snacks, and prepare for some silly Eastern European accents. I seriously hope your cards are better than your nicknames. That will fully get on your nerves as we count through 101 facts about Grand Theft Auto 4. Number 1. Grand Theft Auto 4 is a rootin' tootin' punchin' shootin' action adventure video game developed by Rockstar North and published by Rockstar Games. It was released for the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 consoles on the 29th of April 2008, and later for Microsoft Windows on the 2nd of December 2008. Following the release of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas in 2004, Grand Theft Auto 4 is the sixth main title in the Grand Theft Auto series, and good heavens it was a doozy. Number 2. Grand Theft Auto 4 is set within the fictional land of Liberty City, which some of you may have noticed is based on the non-fictional land of New York City. The game's single-player story follows an Eastern European war veteran named Nico Bellic, who's come to Liberty City in search of A, a better life, well it's like cats, and B, the former comrade who betrayed him. However, Nico is quickly drawn into a turbulent underworld filled with gangsters, loan sharks, and unfortunately named Irish Americans. Number 3. Roughly 150 developers worked on Grand Theft Auto 4, with work on the game beginning soon after the release of San Andreas. Here we go again. The project was led by several core members of the team that worked previously on Rockstar's breakout 3D GTA title Grand Theft Auto 3, which was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2001. Number 4. For GTA 4, Rockstar used their proprietary Rockstar Advanced game engine, also known as Rage, which was first used in Rockstar's 2006 title Rockstar Games Presents Table Tennis. Yes, really. Rage was used in conjunction with the Euphoria game animation engine, which uses procedural animation to produce realistic character movement, creating an innovative gameplay experience for GTA 4. Number 5. As such, Grand Theft Auto 4 is the first game in the GTA series to feature ragdoll physics, allowing players to experience impressively naturalistic action when cooking falls with an obscene array of weapons, or hilariously flying out of your windscreen during high-speed vehicle collisions, just as God intended. Number 6. Incidentally, 4 is also the first game in the GTA series to include dynamic lighting, realistic object and water physics, and more realistic interaction with NPCs using the Euphoria engine. Basically, it's a big step up graphically from Carl Johnson and his weird little paddle hands. Just look at them. It's tragic, really. Number 7. Grand Theft Auto 4 is also the first GTA game to have been produced in glorious high definition, an exciting development which heralded a more realistic and detailed aesthetic style and tone, allowing players to behold Nico's rugged visage in all its haunted, scowling beauty. Number 8. Despite this, Rockstar North art director Aaron Garbutt stated that while GTA 4 certainly moved on from the cartoony feel present in previous entries in the series, the team wasn't specifically aiming for realism when developing the game's visual aesthetic. Number 9. Garbutt has also said that one of the main reasons why they decided to set the game in a city based on New York was because of its diversity, vibrancy, and cinematic quality. As Rockstar wanted to emphasize detail and variety in GTA 4, New York became the perfect foundation upon which to build Nico's varied and distinctive environment. Number 10. As part of their research for their open-world reimagining of the Big Apple, or rather, the Big Apple, the game's developers conducted field research by travelling to New York and having a good old nosy around. This consisted of a general introductory research trip to NYC at the beginning of the game's development, and a more focused expedition when work on the game had already progressed a fair amount. Number 11. They also had a full-time research team based in New York that constantly provided them with additional information, images, and video to help bring their vision of Liberty City to life. This dedicated team utilized census data to map out the ethnic demographics of Liberty City's various districts, examined architectural plans and satellite images to construct realistic apartments and neighborhoods, and scoured over automobile sales figures to see which cars would be most likely to appear in certain areas. Number 12. It's worth noting that the Liberty City featured in the game is not the same Liberty City from the original Grand Theft Auto or Grand Theft Auto 3. There are five areas in this game which each correspond to an area in or surrounding New York City. Algonquin, Dukes, Broker, and Bohan are respectively based on Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, and the Bronx, while Alderney is based on the neighboring state of New Jersey. Number 13. 
Hilariously, according to an interview with the game's co-writer, Rockstar's co-founder, and all-round video game legend Dan Hauser, Staten Island was not included in the game because it was eventually decided that the much maligned borough simply wasn't interesting enough of a location to include in the game. Come on guys, don't be mean to Staten Island. Do you want them to secede again? Don't answer that. Number 14. The game originally included a number of locations based on areas of New York and New Jersey, which were ultimately cut from the final product. These included Anger Bay, based on Pelham Bay in the Bronx, Richmond, based on Richmond Hill in Queens, Norfolk, Jefferson Heights, and Frogtown, based on NoHo, Hamilton Heights, and Turtle Bay in Manhattan, and Actor Bay, based on South Kearney in New Jersey. Number 15. In fact, the setting of the game was originally going to be Liberty State rather than just Liberty City, and would have included significant regions of countryside, including mountains based on the Endurandaks and Catskills. However, the team eventually decided to focus on enlarging not the map, but the player's experience of the game. Very wise indeed. Number 16. Unlike previous entries in the GTA series, Grand Theft Auto 4 lacks a strong cinematic influence, with greater emphasis placed on creating an original and engaging story that isn't just a massive Scarface ripoff. Sorry, Vice City, but someone had to say it. May as well have been me. Number 17. Still, the creators of GTA 4 did draw some of their inspiration from the world of cinema. It appears that Nico was inspired by the character of Vladimir Mashov's character Sasha from the 2001 American war film Behind Enemy Lines, which takes place in Bosnia and Herzegovina during the war. I don't know about you, by the way, but Behind Enemy Lines is certainly the best film set in the Bosnian war starring Owen Wilson that I've ever seen. Number 18. In fact, Mashov was actually offered the role of Nico by the creators of GTA 4, but he declined. He later explained in an interview on Russian TV that he wasn't really interested in the project and didn't really take it seriously, mainly because no one told him what the game would be at the time he was asked. Number 19. Nico Bellic is voiced by American actor Michael Hollick, who apparently did such a fine job of bringing Nico to life that he won the Best Male Voice Actor Award at the 2009 Video Game Awards. Hollick has also starred in a number of popular TV shows such as Law & Order, SVU, and Sex in the City. Number 20. When the game's voice actors were auditioning for their roles, they were apparently told that they were actually auditioning for a game called Frozen. What a cutting ruse. I wonder how far they let it go. Hey, eh? hey, eh? Let it go like the- Oh, tough crowd. Whoa. Number 21. Like previous installments in the series, GTA 4 featured a smorgasbord of entertaining radio stations filled with banging tunes and hilarious hosts. Indeed, the game's creators went to great lengths to ensure that the radio in GTA 4 was all that it could be, contacting over 2,000 people in order to obtain recording and publishing rights. Number 22? Oh, oh, oh. In fact, the team went so far as to hire a private investigator to locate the relatives of the late Scat Brothers member Sean Delaney in order to secure the rights to the band's song Walk the Night, a tune the team felt had to be in the game. That's some good police work right there, Rockstar. Number 23. The team behind GTA 4 even enlisted American hip-hopper DJ Green Lantern to produce a number of tracks exclusively for the game's hip-hop radio station, The Beat 102.7. Wow, a Green Lantern I actually want to hear about. Never thought I'd see the day. Number 24. The game's radio station, Massive B Sound System 96.9, is hosted by real-life record label owner and record producer Hello. Bobby Condas, who also went above and beyond for the game's soundtrack. Condors actually flew to Jamaica to get dancehall artists to record updated versions of their tracks, which include references to various locations within Liberty City. Number 25. In fact, two songs in the game, namely Liberty City The Invasion and No Sex For Ben, <laughs> gutted Ben, were composed specifically for the GTA 4 soundtrack. You lucky devils. Number 26. Numerous celebrities also lent their talents to GTA 4, appearing as various radio DJs and hosts in the game. Big names include musicians Iggy Pop, Femi Kuti, Juliette Lewis, late fashion designer Karl Lagerfeld, for some reason, and the real-life radio talk show host and series regular Laszlo Jones. Number 27. Saturday Night Live veterans Bill Hader and Jason Sudeikis also appear as hosts on the game's radio liberal and conservative radio talk shows, while fellow SNL legend Fred Armisen voiced several guests on Laszlo's Integrity 2.0. Number 28. On the topic of talk radio, in July of 2007, Rockstar launched a teaser site for WKTT, one of the radio stations featured in the game, which invited GTA fans to call a telephone number to talk about what they believed was wrong with Liberty City America, Liberals, or your health, in the style of an angry conservative talk radio phone-in. Rockstar included the best of these rants in the final version of the game. Number 29. In addition, numerous other comedians, including Jim Norton, Rick Shapiro, Robert Kelly, Patrice O'Neill, as well as other radio hosts like Opie and Anthony, appeared on the radio or as characters in GTA 4. Number 30. 
GTA 4 is also notable for the inclusion of well-known stand-up comedians such as Ricky Gervais and Cat Williams, who appear in the in-game comedy club Split Sides. Both comedians did full motion and voice capture for their appearances within the game. Have I said game too many times? You bet your game I have. Number 31. While creating GTA 4, the developers included an anti-piracy feature that, upon detecting an illegal copy, caused the camera to start violently wobbling after a few minutes, almost like an extreme mode of when Nico's drunk. Having to say violently wobbling, by the way, is very triggering for me personally, so hope you all appreciate the lengths I go to for you guys. Number 32. In case you are prepared to tolerate a little annoying screen wobble in order to not fork out for a genuine copy of the game, another anti-piracy measure will also disable the brakes on all vehicles. Try and take Roman bowling when you're careening off-road into a crowd of pedestrians. Oh, you meant to do that. Right, okay. Yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Number 33. Overall, Grand Theft Auto 4 took more than three and a half years to be completed by a team of over 1,000 people to whom we all owe a great debt. Kinda, we did pay for the game. Thank you for your sacrifice, Rockstar nerds. Thank you. Number 34. Not only that, the game cost approximately $100 million to produce, making it the most expensive video game ever developed at the time. The record is now held by GTA 4's successor GTA 5, which cost a staggering $265 million to make. Number 35. Upon release, Grand Theft Auto 4 was met with near-universal critical acclaim, with praise particularly directed at the game's richly complex narrative, expansive open-world design, and engaging combat system. Number 36. Indeed, Andrew Reiner of Game Informer wrote in his review of the game that Grand Theft Auto 4 completely changes the landscape of gaming. Alright, calm down, it's no Rugrat Search for Reptar, is it? Number 37. Not surprising, based on the outpouring of adulation liberally heaped upon it by the gaming world's most discerning commentators, Grand Theft Auto 4 immediately became an insuppressible commercial success. Within 24 hours of its release, the game had sold over 3.6 million copies, and as of 2019, it shifted over 25 million copies. Worldwide, baby. Today, GTA 4 remains the best-selling PlayStation 3 game of all time. Number 38. These beefy sale figures translated into some serious cheddar for Rockstar's parent company Take-Two Interactive, earning them an impressive $310 million in its first day and $500 million in its first week. Number 39. As such, Grand Theft Auto 4 is regarded by many as one of the most significant titles of the seventh generation of video games, and by many as one of the greatest games ever made. It won various year-end accolades, including Game of the Year awards from several gaming media outlets like Spike TV, Giant Bomb, and Kotaku. Number 40. Predictably, however, the game also generated controversy among the various anti-gaming malcontents who decry the ill effects of so-called violent video games without ever producing a shred of reliable evidence for these accusations. If I sound biased, it's because I am. Regardless, as with previous installments in the GTA series, criticism was broadly directed at the game's depiction of criminality and violence, while more specific criticism was directed toward the player's ability to have Nico drive under the influence of alcohol. Number 41. In some of the trailers and official artwork for GTA 4, Nico can be seen wearing fingerless gloves, despite the fact that these are not available in the game without mods, which can only be done on the PC version. It's portrayals like this that frankly put me in therapy, that and my near pathological obsession with certain Hollywood actresses who shall remain nameless. Beautiful, but nameless. The Meaning of Life some of the official artwork for GTA 4 features a lovely young lady named Lola Del Rio, innocently licking a lollipop in a completely appropriate and normal fashion, just as the good lord intended. Creepily, however, it's been suggested by eagle-eyed GTA fans that Lola appears to have a strange combination of digits on her right hand. Closer inspection reveals that she clearly has five fingers, which is odd enough in and of itself, and likely not as the good lord intended. No word on Lola's thumb, though. If she does have one, it cannot be seen in the image. Number 43. The very first line of dialogue in GTA 4, and thus the entire HD era of Grand Theft Auto, is Daddy's Back, which is yelled by a character called Dave as he's being dominated by an unnamed Thai woman while aboard the Platypus cargo ship that brings Nico to Liberty City. Incidentally, this line is often repeated by Michael DeSanta, one of the protagonists in the subsequent main series installment GTA 5. Number 44. In the mission entitled Final Interview, the corrupt cop Francis McGreary tasks Nico with the job of whacking a lawyer named Tom Goldberg, who has evidence of Francis being hella corrupt. One of the possible lines that Goldberg says in the mission is, Guns don't kill people, video games do, which is a sarcastic nod to a real and now disbarred American attorney named Jack Thompson, who has attempted on multiple occasions to bring legal action against Rockstar, based on his own entirely unjustified belief that the GTA games have inspired violence and murder amongst the young people who play them. Number 45. 
But that isn't the only shot that the creators of GTA 4 took against Thompson. There's an office in Alderney that belongs to Tom Jackson, attorney at law, who uses the slogan, No Case Too Small. Hilariously, the building as it appears in the game has been converted into a cash for games store. <laughs> oh, Rockstar, you rascals. You hilarious, magnificent rascals. Number 46. While Nico and Vlad are walking to Vlad's car during the intro cutscene for the Mission Clean Getaway, Vlad yells, I'm walking here, after he's almost hit by a taxi. This is a reference to a scene in the film Midnight Cowboy, in which Dustin Hoffman yells the same phrase after he too almost gets run over by a taxi. Number 47. The name of the mission, I Need Your Clothes, Your Boots and Your Motorcycle, is a reference to... I, I mean, do I really need to tell you? You should know this already, but... <sighs> Fine, it's a reference to Terminator 2 Judgment Day, in which Arnie Schwarzenegger says the same line before stealing a man's clothes, boots, and vehicle like an absolute prat. Number 48. The name of the mission entitled The Master and the Molotov is probably a reference to the well-known Soviet satire novel The Master and the Margarita, by Russian writer Mikhail Bulgakov. The novel tells a complex and darkly comedic tale in which the officially atheistic Soviet Union is visited by the big guy downstairs, also known as the Devil. See, GTA does have some highbrow references too. Number 49. If the player decides to whack Playboy X rather than Dwayne in the mission entitled The Holland Play, Nico can then go into the wardrobe of Playboy's apartment and put on an outfit that's pretty much identical to that worn by Claude, the protagonist of Grand Theft Auto 3. Number 50. The mission Weekend at Florian's is a reference to the comedy movie Weekend at Bernie's, a whimsical tale about parting with a corpse. Not only is the name of the mission similar to the title of the movie, but during the mission, Florian insists he's changed his name to Bernie, which is also a nod to the film's title. Number 51. As Nico's visual aesthetic is inspired by Sasha the Tracker from Behind Enemy Lines, it's no surprise that Rockstar has tucked a nice little reference to the character in GTA 4. A jacket that very closely resembles that which Sasha wears in the film is available to purchase in the Russian shop clothing store. Number 52. There's a street located in Chinatown called Wong Wei, which is thought to be named after the character of Mr. Wong, who's appeared in several games in the Grand Theft Auto series. The name of the street is also a delightful play on the phrase Wrong Way. So if you're a hardcore GTA fan who also relishes a good pun, be sure to visit this hallowed monument to gentle linguistic merriment. Number 53. Curiously, many of the street names in the borough of Bohan are named after prisons. Examples include Alcatraz Avenue, Sing Sing Avenue, Guantanamo Avenue, Leavenworth Avenue, Attica Avenue, San Quentin Avenue, Rikers Avenue, Folsom Way, and Joliet Street. Number 54. As previously mentioned, the borough of Alderney is actually based on the US state of New Jersey, and is therefore separate from Liberty City and its boroughs. As such, the uniforms worn by the police in Alderney are distinct from those worn by the LCPD, and resemble the uniforms of the real-life New Jersey State Police. Number 55. The cabaret club in Broca, owned by Russian Mafia member Mikhail Faustin, is named Perestroika, which is the name given to the political and economic reforms carried out in the Soviet Union by then General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev. This is an odd name for a club, given that the word's literal translation is restructuring. Welcome to Club Restructuring, everyone! You'll have to come back later, though, as we're currently restructuring. Number 56. There's also a restaurant in Broca called Little Gorbachev's, an obvious nod to the aforementioned Russian and formerly Soviet politician Mikhail Gorbachev, as well as the British roadside restaurant chain Little Chefs. Never in my life did I think I'd see a simultaneous reference to both the last leader of the USSR and a now defunct British restaurant chain, but such is the magic of GTA 4. Number 57. Much of the material that Cat Williams performs at the Split Sides Comedy Club is from his stand-up specials Pimp Chronicles and American Hustle. So if you want to see the same routine but performed by a CGI version of Williams, GTA 4 has you covered. Here's a question though, did you actually ever sit through the comedy shows in GTA 4? Or were you too busy mowing down baddies in a hail of bullets or taking your various girlfriends out for cluck and bell? Let us know in our snazzy YouTube poll. Number 58. If you use the scope on the sniper rifle while looking at cash registers throughout the game, you'll notice that they all have a button that reads Ask CJ, which is an affectionate reference to Carl Johnson from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Several of the other buttons also bear humorous labels, such as Montage and Launch Missiles. Customer service has responsibility in Liberty City. Number 59. There's also a restaurant in Alderney named... <laughs> Fanny Crabs, which appears to be a parody of the real-life restaurant Fatty Crabs. The term Fanny Crabs is itself an example of some charming British slang we use here in Great Britain, and refers to that you get in your when you've had that'll all make it in, right? Yeah. Number 60. Inside various interiors, including all TW at internet cafes and various vehicle dealerships, a Kakagawa Power Ultra 3000 Pro photocopier can be seen behind the cashier's desk. 
If you look at the copier through the scope of a sniper rifle, you can see that the message on screen reads, Error Unleash Ninja Guru. Delightful. Number 61. If you go into Burger Shot and look up at the menu above the counter, you can see a disclaimer underneath several dishes, temptingly dubbed the Bleeder and the Heart Stopper, which reads, This burger may kill you, we can't be held responsible. Even better, if you look really, really closely, you'll notice that the word responsible is actually spelt responsible. Oh, Rockstar, how I love thee. Number 62. One of the most well-known Easter eggs in the game is the Statue of Happiness, an obvious nod to New York's iconic Statue of Liberty. Interestingly, if you take the time to actually look at the statue's giant mug, you'll notice that it bears a striking resemblance to that of American politician and popular vote winner Hillary Clinton. Please begin typing out your angry political comments now. Number 63. Not only that, instead of holding a flaming torch like the Statue of Liberty does, the Statue of Happiness is holding a coffee cup, which can be seen emitting steam, suggesting that the coffee is hot. This is no doubt a reference to the highly controversial hot coffee minigame from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, and Hillary Clinton's notable attempts to bring in greater regulation of the video game industry in response. Nintendo 64 But the Easter egginess doesn't end there! It's actually possible to go inside the Statue of Happiness, through an entrance on the upper level of the monument's pedestal that can only be reached using a helicopter. Upon approaching said entrance, players are met with a metal plaque which rather sarcastically reads, No hidden content this way. As if you need any more of a hint than that, Nico can then enter the structure and scale a ladder up to its midsection, whereupon the player is met by the unholy sight of a monstrous beating heart, held in place by a number of thick chains. Number 65. Funnily enough, Nico can actually find his own entry on the LCPD database. The record notes that Nico is a recent immigrant to Liberty City from Eastern Europe, though his place of birth is unknown. The entry also states that although Nico is linked to Russian and West Indian criminals in Broker, he appears to be avoiding allegiance to one particular criminal organization. Number 66. Nico's LCPD database entry also states that his first criminal offense was Grand Theft Auto, a crime he committed in 2008. Get it? Grand Theft Auto in 2008? It's a reference to GTA 4. From within GTA 4! Yeah, try that, Deadpool. Number 67. The LCPD online database can also reveal a little more information about some of your friends and literal partners in crime. According to the database, little Jacob's full name is Jacob Hughes, real Batman's given name is Tier 4 Maxwell Davis, and Playboy X's given name is Trey Stewart. It also establishes that the first name of Mrs. McReary, the elderly and devout mother of Derek, Francis, Gerald, Patrick, and Katie McCreary, is Maureen. Number 68. LittleLazySurprisePageant.com is a website in Grand Theft Auto 4, which is firstly a reference to the children's underwear manufacturer Little Lazy Surprise that can be heard advertised in GTA Vice City stories. If that's already setting off alarm bells for you, it should, and that sound may be soon accompanied by police sirens, because accessing the website brings up a warning message from the LTPD which ominously states, We see it all, we know it all. Turns out the website is a sting operation, and soon after leaving the browser, the player will quickly end up with a 5 star wanted level. Number 69. Yeah. On the in-game website yourmexicandoctor.com, there are listed two fictional drugs, Hingmaralgan and H4PP1. These first appeared in Manhunt 2, another muy controversial game by Rockstar, though less because of violence and more because of ultraviolence. Number 70. The MP3 ringtones Nico can buy for his phone on VIPLuxuryRingtones.com are in fact real songs heard on the in-game radio stations Lips 106 and Head Radio in Liberty City Stories. Number 71. Similarly, the pager ringtone on Nico's cell phone is the same pager sound from Grand Theft Auto 3. The very same! Number 72. There is also a radio advert or commercial in GTA 4 for babies overnight, for which there is also a corresponding website advertising a mail order baby service that takes the hassle out of human reproduction and pregnancy. <laughs> oh, Rockstar. This is itself a reference to Pets Overnight, a similar pet based service featuring GTA 3. The two adverts even share a somewhat ominous tagline delivered in a box directly to your door. Number 73. The in-game radio station Weasel News is an obvious parody of the American conservative news channel Fox News. This is alluded to with its slogan, Reporting the Right News, referencing the real-life channel's well-known right-wing bias. I mean, that's not controversial to say, is it? It's pretty obvious. Number 74. In many alleyways throughout Grand Theft Auto 4, there is graffiti that reads Cope 2, or sometimes just Cope. These in-game scribblings are references to Cope 2, who is in fact a very real and well-known graffiti artist from New York. Number 75. But the graffiti-based easter eggs don't end there. 
On the road between Dukes and Church Island that passes over East Borough Bridge, the first building on the left is covered in graffiti of past GTA characters such as Misty, El Burro, and 8-Ball in convict overalls. Number 76. On the golf course located in Firefly Island, one of the holes has a scaled-down model of the Ocean View Hotel from Grand Theft Auto Vice City. Number 77. Uh, the GPS system usually makes a delightful instrumental bing-bong sound when approaching a turn, but on rare occasions, this will be replaced with a voice that literally just says the words bing-bong. Rockstar, if you want to use that in your next game in GTA 6, maybe, you can. Number 78. The passenger planes at Francis International Airport can be seen taxiing the runways, but will never actually take off. Instead, they will simply maneuver around the runways in circles indefinitely. Number 79. The MP5 firearm available in the game has Made in Scotland written on each side, likely implanted into the game by its Scottish developer Rockstar North as a reminder to the world that Scotland does indeed exist. Number 80. If you head to the huge rock on the beach in southeast West Dyke, there is often someone practicing Tai Chi on top of it. And yes, you can whack them, which we encourage you to do. Number 81. Buckle up, guys, because this is a weird one. By standing next to Patrick and correctly positioning the camera to phase into his hollow digital body, you can see that the McCreary brother has a small box floating inside his head that's decorated with skulls. Why this exists, viewer, I do not know. All I can tell you is that it chills me to the darkest corners of my very soul. Number 82. Triad sometimes can be heard saying, My cousin owns a casino in Las Venturas, maybe we should go sometime. Which is almost certainly a reference to the character Wu Zimu from Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, who is a proprietor of the Four Dragons Casino Casino on the southernmost side of the strip in Las Venturas. Number 83. Upon completion of all nine of the Fixer's assassination missions, the player is rewarded with an achievement called Assassin's Greed. I mean, you get what that's a reference to, right? I don't have to say it. It's a reference to Assassin's Creed, which is also some video games, okay? Okay. Number 84. If the player manages to pull off 10 melee counters in the space of 10 minutes, they will be rewarded with an achievement called... <clears throat> Finish him! This is a nod to the Mortal Kombat series, in which the announcer famously declares the same phrase before the match-winning blow. Number 85. The achievements Join the Midnight Club and Top the Midnight Club are likely to be references to the Midnight Club series of arcade-style racing video games, which are also by Rockstar North. Phew, that was nice and compact. No fat on that fact at all. Let's move on, though. Number 86. The warm coffee achievement with which you are rewarded for following a successful date with a lady ending with her inviting you into her house <laughs> is yet another reference to the controversial hot coffee mod for GTA San Andreas. Number 87. The achievement entitled Alvidezain Petrovic, awarded for winning as both teams in every ranked multiplayer game mode, is a really quite obscure reference to the British mid-80s comedy drama Alvidezain Pet, which follows a group of English construction workers who leave the UK in search of employment abroad. That's one of the best things about GTA, by the way. It's a global gaming phenomenon, but it's filled with references to relatively obscure aspects of British culture. It makes me feel seen. Number 88. The tank that famously appears in various GTA titles, known as the Rhino, was going to appear in GTA 4, but it was ultimately cut, presumably in service of the game's greater emphasis on realism. This is evidenced by lines of code within the game files for the extension pack The Lost and Damned, though the Rhino does not appear in that installment either. Number 89. GTA 4 was also going to include flyable planes and jets, but these were eventually cut because the game's map was too small. Just in case anyone from Rockstar is watching this video, please know we will never be annoyed by the inclusion of planes. Never. Number 90. Sound files that still exist in the game's code suggest that Nico could originally buy ice cream from street vendors. The reason why this feature was taken out will forever be a mystery to us, but the thought of directing Nico on a leisurely stroll across the beach while slurping on a Mr. Whippy sounds utterly magical. Number 91. There's an unused map icon representing a boat in the game's files under the name Radar underscore Boat Tour. This would suggest that a boat tour service was once available in the game. And yet here we are, without the ability to send Nico on a whimsical jaunt around the harbour. How dare they cut that? How actually dare they? Number 92. In April of 2009, a little under two years after the release of Grand Theft Auto 4, the first of two episodic expansion packs was released under the title Grand Theft Auto 4 The Lost and the Damned. The game follows the trials and tribulations of Johnny Klebitz, vice president of the orderly chapter of The Lost MC, an outlaw motorcycle club which featured in a number of missions in GTA 4. The game was critically acclaimed, yada yada, because of course it was. It's a GTA game, everyone loved it. Keep up. Number 93. 
During the intro cutscene for the Lost and Damned, while the Lost Brotherhood are riding in formation down the streets of Liberty City, Nico Bellic can briefly be seen walking on the sidewalk in the same tired ass threads, bumping into a pedestrian and speaking in Serbian like the multilingual Balkan zaddy he is. Number 94. Funnily enough though, Nico's sneaky little cameo appearance is actually rather incongruous. At the time of his appearance, he wouldn't have even been off the boat that brought him to Liberty City. And even if he had been, Nico was at the time confined to Broker and Dukes due to rising terror alerts. So what's he doing skulking around Alderney? Number 95. The Lost and Downed was notable for several reasons, but is possibly most famous for the opening cutscene to a mission entitled Politics, in which a crooked politician named Thomas Stubbs III politely asks you to murder his uncle. Nice guy. As he's just enjoyed a massage, Stubbs is without clothing during the cutscene, though his unspeakables are kept out of frame. Until the very last moment, that is, making The Lost and Damned the first GTA game to feature full frontal nudity. This caused controversy among various groups because yada yada yada, who cares, it's a GTA game, of course it did. Number 96. The second of Grand Theft Auto 4's episodic expansion packs was released in April of 2010, under the delightful title of Grand Theft Auto The Ballad of Gay Tony. The story follows Luis Lopez, an ex-member of the Dominican Dealers, and the personal bodyguard of and assistant to nightclub impresario Anthony Gay Tony Prince. The Ballad of Gay Tony didn't quite match the Lost and the Damned in critical reception, instead scoring 8s and high 80s in various reviews, thus bringing shame upon the entire Grand Theft Auto series. Number 97. Hilariously, a particular four-letter swear word, which we absolutely can't say, is heard a total of 14 times in The Ballad of Gay Tony, the most out of any game in the Grand Theft Auto series. Number 98. Roman is the only character in the game who speaks to all three protagonists from GTA 4 and its expansion packs. In the original, he's the deuteragonist and speaks with his cousin Nico throughout the game, mostly asking about bowling. In The Lost and Damned, Roman is kidnapped by Johnny in the mission Roman's Holiday, and in The Ballad of Gay Tony, Luis gets Roman into the Masonette 9 club along with Brucey in the mission Ladies Half Price. Number 99. Grand Theft Auto 4 and its plucky Balkan bad boy protagonist Nico are actually referenced in an episode of the TV series Criminal Minds. In the fifth episode of season six, entitled Safe Haven, a criminal gives his name as Nico Bellic, which FBI agent David Rossi immediately recognizes as the name of the plucky Balkan bad boy protagonist of Grand Theft Auto 4. That's some good fictional police work there, Rossi. Number 100. In April of 2018, a decade after the game's release in 2008, Rockstar released a patch that removed several songs from the in-game radio stations due to issues with licensing said songs. The cull was so drastic that a totally new playlist of tracks was added to Vladivostok FM after all but one of the songs were removed from the station. Number 101. In the 2018 game Marvel's Spider-Man, there's a mission entitled Spider-Man PI that has our webby superhero Wunderkind tracking down a woman's husband who is having secret tete-a-tetes with a mysterious lady. Spidey then discovers that said mysterious lady is blackmailing the husband into helping her team carry out a casino heist, several members of which share the names of characters in GTA 4, including Nico and Roman. Indeed, the woman who initially seeks Spider-Man's help is named Carmen, which is likely a reference to Carmen Ortiz, a dateable character in Grand Theft Auto 4. And there we have it, that was 101 Facts About Grand Theft Auto 4. Is this your favourite in the series? What other games would you like to see us cover next? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, give this video a like and subscribe to 101 Facts if you haven't done so already, because it's what all the cool kids have done. It really is, and they're all talking about you because you haven't done it yet, so get on it, cool kid. Also, click on the bell, and then YouTube will tell you when there's a new video up. I know, space hate, right? In the meantime, though, oh my lord, look, two videos on screen especially for you. List of thousands for you. So why not give it a click and I'll see you there, most likely. I'm going bowling. Bye.